Hi everyone, my name is Opal Altaloon. It's really nice to meet you. I'm a 2D VTuber, and I figured out how to rig hands. So I want to teach you this so you too can rig hands for your own 2D VTuber model. This video series did take a lot of time and work for me to make, so if you do find it useful, it would mean a lot to me if you could like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, as well as follow me on Twitch. Also, to stay up to date on my future projects, as well as when I stream, feel free to join my Discord channel as well. I'll put a link in the description below for both my Twitch page and Discord channel for your convenience. Welcome back! Now that we have fully rigged right and left arms, as well as hands, we are ready to export our model into VTube Studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do that, as well as how I set up my hands and my arms and everything in VTube Studio itself, just so you can have a smooth experience when your hands are recognized and when they are not. First thing we have to do, though, is if you have not set up a texture atlas yet, we need to set up a texture atlas. You can do this by clicking this box, and it'll say texture name. You don't really have to name it if you don't want to. Um, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not gonna change it. So I am going to make it, um, you don't have to make it this big, but I am just for the sake of this tutorial, just to make sure everything fits and it's high quality. Um, if you can do the same, make it 8,000 by 8,000 and press okay. So what it's doing right here is it is automatically setting up all of the pieces to my model and it is, it looks like it all fits perfectly fine and that's great. So we can go ahead and press OK. It may take some time to think. Now that the texture atlas is finished loading, we can export this to VTube Studio. Click File, Export for Runtime, Export as Mach 3 File. You can select whatever option you want. For the sake of this tutorial, I am selecting SDK 4.0. OK. And it is very important that you make a brand new folder so for me, I named it Rigging Export to VTube Studio. I'm going to save it in here. And the reason being you should make your own separate folder is because when you click Save, it's going to save the texture atlas, the live 2D file, and a whole bunch of different things in this folder. So it's just easy to locate everything. Click Save. Once that is saved, it'll show you in your file folder where it is, and you can locate it. Now let's move on to VTube Studio, open it up, and we will continue from there. Now we have VTube Studio open, and I'm going to show you how to import your model into this program. Double click, and it will show you all these options. You may not have a whole bunch here, just kind of like the standard models that they have available. Click Import Your Own Model, and it'll show you where you need to put your folder. Click Open Folder, and it's going to show you where you need to save your file. So I have this open as well as all of the stuff that we saved from Live2D. Remember the rigging export to VTube Studio file 
And remember how I said there will be a whole bunch of different things saved in it? There are four different things, and we need to make sure that we copy all of this into here. We're going to create a new folder, and we're going to call it hand rigging. Click on this, and we are going to select all of this and move it into here. Now just be patient, it'll take a few minutes for it to load and recognize it, and then we'll go from there. Now that a few minutes has passed, let's see if it is fully loaded. Okay, so you can see right here, it says hand rigging, so it looks like it was a success. Let's click on it. Now you'll see this pop up. It'll ask, do you want to run auto setup for model hand rigging tutorial? So you'll have this probably named something else unless you are using my own asset. Please click auto setup. This is extremely important. Click auto setup. It'll say this will create 20 new VTube Studio parameters based on a default Live 2D. And that's okay, so press okay. Let's see if our camera is on and working. Double click, click on this gear and this camera. It looks like the camera is off, so I'm gonna turn it on. But before I do that, I just wanna let you know that there's an option if you are using just a regular camera for tracking. There is face and hand tracking available. I don't think at the time of this recording that this is available if you're using like an iPhone or a phone. This could change in the future. For the sake of this tutorial, we're only going to focus on the hand tracking, but just know this option is available if you're using a camera that is not from a phone. Select, camera on, and in theory, if we did everything correctly, if I raise my left arm, shows my hand, yeah, it looks like it recognized it. How about my right hand? Yep, looks like it's good. The only thing you'll notice is it's not super fluid and it's kind of shaky. I'm going to show you how to fix it. First though, I'm moving my fingers and I can kind of see that there's some white lines happening with the hands. I'm not sure if you can see it very well um, in this video, but I'm going to show you how to correct that first. Click on this, and then it'll say fix white outlines. Click on that. It'll give you this warning. Make sure you understand what this is saying. And I know that it'll be completely fine. I've tested this on my model. But before you click this, make sure you save um, a separate um, file folder of your model, because um, this could probably take out too much and it may look a little strange. So this is just a warning, letting you know that that may happen. I'm gonna press okay. It'll take a few seconds for it to clean it up. And it looks like those white lines are gone. That's great. We can move on to the next step. Okay, so the hand left found and the hand right found. It looks like it's picking it up nicely. If you're fine with how this looks, you can just leave it. But I like to add a little bit of smoothing. So let's see what it looks like at 30 for the left hand. You can see it does that turning motion compared to the other hand that just snaps into view. So that's how you make that turning motion. You just add the smoothing. I like the smoothing, so I'm gonna do that for the right hand as well. Next, we have hand right position X. Take the smoothing and we will just put it at 30. And 
we're going to put this to 9. We're going to put this to negative 0.4. And these two numbers should be okay. We're going to do hand right position Y next. We're also going to do smoothing at 30. And we're going to put this at 6. I'm going to put this at negative 6. And we're just going to copy the same thing and do that for the left. So hand left position X, smoothing 30. We're going to make this 9 and this negative 4. And then next, hand left position Y, put this at smoothing 30. We're going to put this at 6, oops, 6, and negative 6. Next, hand right angle Z, once again, smoothing 30. And we're going to make this 170 and 5. Hand right angle Z, once again, smoothing 30. I'm going to put this at 35, this at negative 70. For the left hand, smoothing 30, we're going to put this at 170, this at 5, hand left angle C, smoothing 30, 35, negative 70. And now we're at the fingers. For all of the fingers, make it smoothing 30 and leave everything else as is. Now that all of this is done, Moving the hands around should be a lot smoother. It won't be as shaky as before. And if you are happy with how it looks now, that's great. There's just one thing I want to show you first though. I'll demonstrate with the camera. So you see how when my hands are like this, and they're facing forward, I move it kind of out and in and it follows. But if I turn my hands and I go out, see how the model's hands go in? And if I go in with my hands, the model's hands go out. If you don't like that, you can fix it by switching it. I will kind of warn you though that if you switch it, um, if you move your hands facing forward outward, it'll make the model's hands move in and vice versa. So essentially you're just switching in which direction your hand will be recognized and the model will display that. So I'll demonstrate by doing one hand. Gotta find hand right angle Z. Here it is. Okay, so right now, the right and left hand, angle Z, is at 180 up here and negative 180 down here. So just to show you what I mean, I'm going to change this top one to negative 180 and this bottom one to positive 180. Keep in mind this is the right hand, so it's this one right here that I just changed. The left hand is still the same as before. Click this camera. 
Now you will notice when I move my hands outward, see how the right hand moves inward? And if I turn it and I move my hands inward, the right hand on the model moves in and outward accordingly. So I'm just showing you there's, there's options based on your preference. And if you do like what the right hand is doing as opposed to what the left hand is doing, all you need to do is just adjust the left hand angle Z. So just find that. Here it is, hand left angle Z. So make this negative 180 up here, positive 180 down here. And everything is mirrored as before. This is how I have my personal model set up. Just because I find when I use my hands, I show the back of my hand more than the front of my hand. So that way, the range in motion of the model is true to what I'm really doing. And that is all for the hand raking tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I know it was a pretty long series, but I wanted to make sure that it was explained in enough detail so you get a head start. If you know anyone that would be interested in raking hands, feel free to share this series with them. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Have fun rigging, and see you next time! Bye!